Hello everyone. So today we are going to talk about writing skills. Now writing skills is also a part of communication skills, but I have made a separate video for better understanding of the topic. We all know that written communication is one of the most effective mode of communication. It's more formal and less flexible than oral communication. So we'll be talking about written communication today. Let us now begin with capitalization rule. Now this is something that has been taught to us since our childhood. We all know where to use a capital letter, where we have to use a smaller letter. But is there any rule to this? Yes, there's a rule. The rule is Mint's rule. M I N T S rule. Now M stands for months. And from months, we can also include days and holidays in it. So for example, Thanksgiving is on Thursday, November 21. Now you'll observe Thanksgiving is a holiday, Thursday is a day and November is a month. We always begin months, days and holidays with capital letters. The next is I, the pronoun I. You must have observed this that wherever you use I, it has to be a capital letter. For example, I am going to sleep. So I has to be a capital letter. N. N stands for names. Now names could be of people, places, monuments, anything. So for example, Rita who is from Italy would love to go to Denmark. Now Rita is the name of a person. Italy, Denmark are places. So we always begin the names with capital letter. T. T stands for titles. Now titles could be of books, movies, even people. Right? Let us see the examples. I love the movie Jurassic Park. Now Jurassic Park is a movie and if you'll observe the name starts with a capital letter. Same ways the Blue Umbrella is a 1980 Indian novel written by Ruskin Bond. So if you'll observe the name of the book is again starting with capital letters. Now when I say titles of people, the title means Mr, Miss, Mrs, Master or even Doctor. Whenever you begin someone's name, we always start with a title. So those title have to again start with a capital letter. Now the last one in the rule is S. S stands for start of a sentence. Now whenever we start a sentence, we always start with a capital letter. So for example, how are you? I am fine. Thank you. So you will observe whenever we begin a sentence, we begin with a capital letter. Now let us talk about punctuations. Now you must have observed while reading or even writing that we make use of punctuation marks. Now there are different punctuations that we use and they have different meanings. The first one is full stop. Now this is the most common uh, punctuation mark that we use. A full stop is basically used to end a sentence. Like for example, my name's Beth and I was 18 in July. Then we put a full stop. It is also called a period. Right. The next one is a question mark. Whenever we ask a question, whenever there is an interrogative sentence, we end our question with a question mark. Whenever we ask a question, for example, where are you from? Then we put a question mark there. Now the next one is quotation marks. They are also referred as uh, speech marks, inverted commas or talking marks. They are used to show where speech or a quotation begins and ends. Now the next one is an apostrophe. Apostrophes are basically used in contractions and to indicate possession. Now contractions are basically when we write is not as isn't. We skip that O and put an apostrophe there. Next is to show possession. For example, Ram's pen. So Ram apostrophe S pen right the next is comma now commas are also very common comma is basically used to separate 
items in a list right or sometimes when the sentence is quite long we put a comma to separate two sentences okay so you can see the examples as well the next one is in hyphen hyphen is basically to join two or more words together you must have noticed uh, certain words put we put dash in between two words like for example mother in law or 8 years old right so we put dashes in between these hyphens okay next is an exclamation mark exclamation mark is basically used with words to show strong emotion or to even give a command for example sit down or you must have observed words like alas wow we put an exclamatory mark there next is an ellipsis ellipses are basically three dots which is used to show the path of the sentences that are left out right you must have observed these in your mathematics books as well okay so for example to be continued and we put three dots there that means there is something that is there but that is not shown here right the next one is parenthesis parenthesis or brackets are used for extra non essential information when we want to put something but that is extra that is that should be known to the reader but that is an extra information we put them in the brackets next is semicolons now semicolons are used to join two independent clauses together now you can see the example here my daughter is a teacher my son is a doctor and in between they have used a semicolon next are colons colons again are used to introduce a list and before a final clause right for example you have two choices and then we put a colon what are these two choices that can be mentioned after the colon i hope this is clear now we'll be talking about part of speech so we'll be covering the five part of speech that is noun pronoun verb adverb and adjectives now what are nouns nouns are basically name of person place animal or thing the naming words okay you can see the example right now let us move on to pronouns now what are pronouns pronouns are words that can be used in place of a noun for example maria is beautiful so maria is a noun here it is the name of a person now maria can be replaced with she she is beautiful so now she is a pronoun you can see the list of pronouns given here next is adjectives describing words are called adjectives words which are used to describe nouns are adjectives for example he is a fast driver so driver is a noun here what kind of a driver he is he is a fast driver so fast is a adjective is an adjective here next are verbs what are verbs action words are called verbs whatever she is doing whatever he is doing is verb for example she is smiling in front of the audience what is she doing she is smiling so is smiling is a verb here david is riding his new bike what is david doing he is riding his new bike is riding is a verb here next are adverbs adverbs are basically words which describe verbs right for example she works works is a verb here she works fast what is the word that is describing the verb fast how is she working she is working fastly right so she works fast works is a verb and fast is a is an adverb here okay i hope this is clear now let us look into some of the supporting part of speech the first one is articles articles are basically letters or words that we use before nouns or noun equivalent okay so they are of two types the first one is an indefinite article and the second one is definite article so indefinite include a and an while the definite is the you can see the examples here a is used before words which have consonant sound for example a bag 
a cat a university your y sound here right so that's why we are putting a in front of university next an is used before words which have vowel sound okay for example an umbrella an egg an honest man though the spelling starts with an h but we pronounce it as honest o that's why we have put an an here okay then these two a and an are basically used before nouns and where the identity is not known to us we are introducing that thing for the first time okay but the the is used before words before nouns where the identity is known to the reader for example i have an umbrella the umbrella is in my bag so the first time i'm mentioning umbrella i have used an before the word right but the next time i'm going to mention umbrella already i have talked about that umbrella so i'll be using the now okay i hope this is clear let us now move on to conjunctions now conjunctions are basically words that are used to join two sentences together for example and for but or all these are used to join two sentences together so now you can look in the examples as well next are prepositions now prepositions are used to link a noun or phrase to another part of the sentence they are very commonly used for example in on under up down so you must have used them also the next is interjection interjection is basically a word which is used to express strong feeling or sudden emotion so for example alas and then we put an exclamatory mark there so all these words are used to show emotion ew congrats god bless you and then we put a exclamatory mark all these are interjections now we all know what a sentence is sentence is basically when words combine together okay when letters combine they form words when words combine they form sentences now let us look into the parts of a sentence the first one is subject subject is that person or thing that does an action a verb is the action that the subject does an object is a person or thing that receives that action for example he paints poster who are we talking about in the sentence we are talking about he so he is the subject here he is going to do the action he is going to paint the posters right what is the verb here what is the work that he is going to do he is going to paint so paint is a verb here and who is going to receive that paint who is going to receive that action the posters are going to receive that action so posters are the objects here okay now types of sentences so there are four types of sentences the first one is declarative sentence second is interrogative sentence third is exclamatory sentence and the fourth one is imperative sentence so declarative sentences are basically the commonest type of sentence that we use okay which provides certain information or states of fact and they always end with full stop for example i like eating vegetables so i put a full stop there so these are declarative sentences interrogative sentences are something or sentences which ask questions for example how are you so we put a question mark there question sentences also okay next is exclamatory sentence also known as emotion reaction sentences we put an exclamatory mark when we end these sentences they are basically used to show sudden emotion strong emotion like happiness sadness fear wonder okay for example oh it's so cold and then we put a exclamatory mark there last one is imperative sentences which are used to show order command request or advice 
they are also known as order sentences they can end with a full stop or an exclamatory mark for example you should eat green vegetables shut the door or uh, wear your sweater complete your project so these are some of the examples of imperative sentences now as we have talked about interrogative sentences we will be talking about the types of interrogative sentences the type of questions so there are basically two types of questions the first one is a close ended question the second one is an open ended question close ended questions are questions where you have to answer them in short like the answers could be in a yes or a no they can be true or false so you cannot describe the answer while open ended questions are questions where there is no limit you can ex you can explain you can describe your answer in whichever form you like for example how would you describe your experience with us now you have to describe your experience you have to write ya elaborate your answer here so it is an open ended question okay did you find what you were looking for today now your answer could be yes or your answer could be no so this is a close ended question now whenever we ask question we follow the method of 5w and 1h that means five words which begin with w and one word that begins with h so what are these words who where when what why how so you can look in the examples as to how these are going to help you in framing questions now the last thing that i would like to talk here is greetings now what are greetings greetings are basically the first word or the first line that we use when we meet someone for the first time for example when you meet your uh, friends what is the word that you use when you meet your teachers what is the word that you use so greetings are basically of two types formal greetings and informal greetings formal greetings are greetings which we use when we meet people in our workplace for example your school your office okay informal greetings are basically greetings which we use for our friends for our family members okay so formal could be good morning good afternoon hello informal could be hi what's up what's going on so i hope all these are clear to you thank you and have a nice day